Hey guys, it's Mio again. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about whether or not you have Peyronie's or not. And uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because a lot of guys come to the forums asking, is this Peyronie's? Is it not? Here's a picture. Here's my symptoms. And I myself wondered for many years if I had the disease. Um, starting at uh, 17 or, well, actually, I better say like 18 or 19. Um, when I started having some bending, uh, after, after sex and masturbation, uh, particularly in the flaccid state, not, not really erect, but, um, <clears throat> the reason why I want to make this video though, uh, mostly is because, um, I feel like delaying a diagnosis and not believing that you had the disease when you clearly do can really uh, cause a lot of damage and make the disease get a lot worse because you, you aren't taking action. So for me, you know, when I'm 31 right now, but when I was 18, I, uh, I had signs of the disease. Well, you know what? I, I had what I think now are signs of the disease. Uh, if you check Wikipedia, if you Google like signs of early, early warning signs of Peyronie's, you won't find anything. Uh, you will find nothing. Uh, but I'll tell you that I believe I found early warning signs and I wish I would have known what they were. But sadly, you know, most urologists don't, don't know much about the disease. There's just not that much literature on it. So um, I'm going to explain to you what I believe are the early warning signs of the disease and um, what might be a precursor to the disease and what I think really defines the disease, uh, because I do not agree with Wikipedia, I don't agree with Google, and um, I don't agree with most urologists, um, except for the specialists, you know. The true speciali specialists, they know what's going on. Um, like Levine, Tom Liu, and uh, uh, many more, many, many more. Um, first off, um, Peyronie's is not simply bending of the penis. Um, a lot of people hear you have a bent dick and they say, oh, that's great, you know, you'll hit the G-spot. Well, wouldn't that be great? If it was that simple, that would be very nice. Um, in fact, a lot of Peyronie's cases aren't bending, per se, but hourglassing or wasting or indentations or even, um, even just some odd kind of erectile symptoms where your penis isn't quite filling out very well because a certain part of it is damaged and getting kind of fibrotic. Um, Peyronie's is not just a hard lump causing the penis to bend. Um, that is retarded, and that is the way that the disease has been defined until now. Um, you know, that's what you used to see. Uh, on Google Image, you'll see this picture of this like big patch of scar tissue on a penis bending it. It's an old picture. Uh, I'm sure every Peyronie's long-term long sufferer has seen this picture, this little diagram. Uh, you know, sometimes Peyronie's is like that, sometimes, but I feel like it's very rare. So, um, what is Peyronie's really like? Well, um, it's, it's pretty different for everybody. Um, it's, I would say it's really different for everybody. It can be, you know, in all different parts of your penis. It can be actually inside your penis, strangely enough. And, um, you know, there was uh, some of the literature and some of the studies were saying that uh, people, younger guys with Peyronie's would present themselves with, uh, would have uh, multiple scar, uh, scar locations and like multiple bands kind of overlapping in different areas. Um, and they can be very soft and maybe not even palpable. So you can't even feel the scars. Um, an ultrasound will not necessarily pick up your scarring. Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, an ultrasound can, can show scarring. It's not a bad idea. It's a good thing. Get the ultrasound. Get one from a specialist, but do not rely on that ultrasound to convince you that you have the disease or you don't. So um, how do you know if you have the damn disease then? Well, my rule is that if your penis is bending when it didn't, 
so you weren't born with it it's not a congenital curve and then in that case you have peyronies there's nothing else that makes your penis bend besides damage to your penis and damage to your penis means hypoxia lack of oxygen it means more free radical damage because of the lack of oxygen because of the lack of quality blood in that damaged area it means um, more TGF beta because of that lack of oxygen and because of the reactive oxygen species in there and um, eventually fibrosis and then scarring soft scarring and then harder scarring and then calcification which is when the the scar is really hard so you have a lot of different you have a kind of a, a spectrum right of different phases where in an interesting way you could say peyronies the old the old concept of peyronies is kind of like the end product of this long cascade of penile damage so penile penis or penile organ damage kind of like heart disease you know like uh you don't call heart disease like the end stage where your heart is completely like uh, your arteries are completely blocked in, in your heart you know like there's there's a whole long process that leads up to that and um the penis is no different now uh there's a genetic component but <clears throat> you know just like cancer and diabetes i don't i don't think the genes are that important and then you also have to think about the um uh, what is the term uh, ep epigen ep let's see epigenetics what is that epigenetics epigenetics so you have to think about your diet your lifestyle and how ep ep epigenetics is how your genes change in response to your environment um, and your uh, you know, how much you exercise or what you eat so um sure there's a genetic component but how can we influence our genes differently to maybe avoid that outcome of you know peyronies or or something or any kind of penile damage so even if you have heart disease in your genes you can alter those those genes and activate other genes um not my specialty so um i i have to keep researching that that area but um you know, it's uh, it's a very complex disease. The cause is multi. You know, there's a there's many models, many many things that the etiology, the cause is very complex. So, like I said, there's genetics, there's uh, the metabolic aspect, which is huge, 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 meaning diabetes and insulin resistance. Um, there's the penile damage model. There's the like reactive oxygen species model. So you're just smoking and uh, drinking too much alcohol and not getting enough antioxidants and many other things. So there's four causes right there. Um, and then you can look at like the individual, uh, you know, the, the on a smaller scale, what's going on in the penis when it happens. You know, the, the damage, the TGF beta and um, other, um, other, other things going on in the penis, right? Um, so it's really complex. And to be honest, um, if you read all of the literature on Peyronie's, you will find that the, the, the specialists, all the people writing this research, they don't really know. They don't really know that this definitely causes it. And, you know, that's, you know, pretty similar to a lot of stuff in medicine, heart disease, cancer. Um, all this stuff, any organ damage, liver damage, all this stuff, it's always complicated. But the good news is that when we have something so systemic and complex, usually there is a way to kind of combat that. Um, I know I'm getting off topic here because I know you want to know if you have the disease or not, and that's what this video is for. Um, but I just want you to understand that it's complex and nobody is really safe from Peyronie's. So, you know, you might think, well, I just don't have the genetic factor. My dad doesn't have it, so I won't get it. And then you get it. You know, my dad has it, um, so I should have expected it, you know, probably. And uh, 
it, his case is actually worse than mine and was worse than mine when he was my age, interestingly. But um, you don't need to be genetically prone to it, you know, um, anybody can get it. Um, just, just consider it the end stage of penile organ damage. Organ damage can come from a lot of different things, okay? If your dick is a little bit damaged, like, you know, that's probably normal. Uh, that's probably okay. You know, there was the old study, a really old study that showed that uh, a quarter of all dead bodies of uh, old guys, a quarter of those dead bodies had scarring on their penises. And this was an old study. So walking around, you can assume that about a quarter of men have some kind of scarring. And, you know, I, I would have to look at the study again. But that was so long ago that now I think the diagnostic um, capabilities would be much better. And, and now if they looked at the penises of people nowadays who watch porn sitting on a computer chair every fucking day, if, they, if, if you could check the penises of all 20-year-olds right now, you know, how many of those penises would have fibrosis or scarring or damage? I, I would say, you know, probably a very high percent. Just like if you checked the elbow of a weightlifter, you know, check my elbows, I'm sure I have scarring on my elbows. But, you know, the elbow is uh, important for the body to maintain. It's a joint, it's a bone, it's meant to, to last you. The penis is not meant to last you, okay? And this is a very important point. It's kind of a... a it's kind of a nuanced point where you really have to think about this, but um, monkeys, dogs, any other mammal other than humans, they have a bone in their penis, which sounds, you know, it's kind of surprising. I, I didn't know that until I, I, I read about it. And the human, uh, humans evolved away from the bone because the penis became a, uh, the barometer of human health. So that means like, no guy, like a guy who couldn't maintain an erection without the bone, just based on his blood flow, if he couldn't maintain that erection, he couldn't pass on his genes. So only the healthiest men with the healthiest hearts and blood flow were able to pass on their genes. And um, it's meant to, you know, be kind of an achievement in a weird sense. And it's not meant to withstand damage, because think about this. If a caveman got his penis in a cave girl and came inside of her, it doesn't matter if he broke his dick in the process, does it? He got his genes in her, right? So she, he has passed on his genes. And, you know, even with a really banged up penis, you can still jam it in and ejaculate. And so it's um, the bare function of the penis just to ejaculate inside of a woman and pass on your genes. Um, that's achieved pretty easily. It, does, it doesn't need to heal. And so uh, we like to think that, you know, we, we tend to think that Peyronie's is this huge unnatural um, thing that's happening to us. And, we you know, we are sick people and we are genetically prone to the sickness and we have been robbed. And to a large degree, yeah, you know, of course we're victims to this, you know, and... Um, Maybe there are ways to avoid it. I think there would have been ways to avoid it for me and for a lot of guys. But I want you to realize that it's more normal than you think. In that any man could have it. A lot of guys have penile damage. You know, it's not It's not just... You're not different. You're not sick, right? Um, but it's up to you how you want to frame that in your mind, right? So... Just my basic point there, as I said, was that everybody um, everybody could have the disease, all right? Just like everybody could have heart disease. Some people are prone. I know I make that comparison a lot, but I think it holds pretty true. Or liver, uh, liver fibrosis or something. Now, all right, so what did I say? I said that if your penis bends when it didn't before, you have Peyronie's. And the reason I say that is because first of all, there's nothing else that can cause bending. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you could have severe Mondor's disease, which is when the main vein of your penis gets inflamed. So it's a vascular disorder or disease. 
Um, or you could have like the lymphatic vessels inflamed and um, sticking out and maybe causing some kind of bending. But I find that, um, first off, I, I don't think that's very common. I don't, I have never heard of that actually. Uh, and usually when guys do have vascular issues or lymph issues, it usually comes with some scarring. So what do I mean by that? Um, okay, a lot of men I have talked to with the disease, both through the forums, through um, Skype or chat, uh, they would get like, when they got Peyronie's, they, they would have spider veins developing on their penis and uh, bulging veins as well. When I got my, when my Peyronie's got really bad, I developed these bulging veins in my pelvic area, you know? And I, I've heard countless stories of people with a similar um, situation. And I have multiple theories on why that is, but I think there's a, there's a, there's a <laughs> can't speak. There is a very large crossover between vascular function and penile function. If you have poor vascular function, you will have poor penile function. So when you injure your penis, depending on how your, your veins and everything react to that injury, um, you might get you know swelling of the veins and then some uh, lack of oxygen, hypoxia, to that area, or um, the blood will start kind of clotting in that area, which is called a hematoma. And we'll talk about that in a moment. And so um, I, I do think they tend to come together, the vein issues and the peroni. So, you know, maybe you find out, oh, this cord on my penis. A lot of guys uh, with peronies have these kind of cords on their penis. It's really common. If you find out it's just a lymphatic vessel or it's just a vein um, and you have some kind of bending, something's different, you know, don't think you're off the hook. But... Don't think you're like, you have this death sentence to like, I have this disease. Oh, I don't have this disease. Peyronie's is a, is a spectrum, just like any other liver damage. Um, I know I'm repeating myself a lot here, but I want to get this across to you. So if you, if you find that these veins in your penis are, are it's not scarring, it's just veins. Don't think you can just masturbate, you know, multiple times a day and not think about it and eat unhealthily and not do the treatments and not see a specialist, though that's up to you. Um, just remember, your, your penis health is your penis health. And ultimately, regardless of if you have the disease or not, you need to preserve your, your penis health. And that's what we're going to do. So remove that idea of the dichotomy of yes or no, I have a disease or I do not. Push it out of your head and just remember I have a certain degree of penile health and I'm going to try to increase its health or preserve it throughout my life. Okay, and uh, you know, we don't, not many people talk about penile health. You know, what does that mean? Uh, how do you increase the health of your penis? Well, interestingly, it's, you know, uh, yeah, you could go into all the different ways to preserve your penile health. I'll make a video on that. But it's more simple than you think. And in a lot of ways, it's just the same as preserving your heart health or your brain health. Okay, that means lowering your insulin resistance, exercising, and taking a lot of antioxidants, and getting some healthy fats. You know, very simple, getting enough sunshine. Um, and, you know, I, I, could, I could make another video on this, and I will. But, but again, um, back to the topic at hand, do you have the disease or not? It's like, asking, it's like asking, do I have cancer or not? Well, the top leading cancer specialists, they will tell you, of course you have cancer. Everybody has cancer cells. Everybody. If you check my prostate right now, or anybody, any man's prostate, he will have cancer cells. And women have breast cancer cells, but as long as they don't reach a certain level of um, um, acidic nature, I, I, I'm not a specialist on this, so I don't know. You guys can help me out in the comments. As long as they don't reach this like a certain level, um, they don't really get out of control, and they can even kind of go away. They go away. So with the penis, I know fibrosis doesn't equal cancer. I know they're different things. But in a way, 
you can think about it in a similar way where if a man is to live till 200, he's going to get cancer. He's going to get Alzheimer's. He's going to get Peyronie's. He's going to get scarring all over his fucking body. All right. We're all going to end up with organ damage. We're all going to end up with, I mean, it's wear and tear. Is Peyronie's a wear and tear disease or not? It's not either or. Um, so don't worry about it, you know. Um, it, just try to think of it very holistically. Think of your penile health as a single thing that you want to increase. And the worst state of penile health would be Peyronie's disease. Um, you know, it's, it's very common that men with Peyronie's disease have erectile dysfunction. And that's not just because the scarring, the scars are pushing on the the arteries of the penis and the, the veins. That's not the only reason. In fact, I think what's more common is that man had poor penile health to begin with. He had insulin resistance to begin with. Um, he maybe was a smoker. Um, so, um, and, and then it was kind of a, a co-founding thing, or I mean, um, something that coexisted. So a person with bad ED tends to have scarring, tends to have fibrosis, right? So Peyronie's as a hard lump and blah, 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 that is end stage poor penile health. Doesn't mean you can't have a pretty healthy penis and still have scarring though, right? So it, it is paradoxical, um, a lot like any other disease. Um, and I wish I would have known that when I was uh, younger. Um, my dad warned me about the disease, but you know, when he went to a doctor back in the uh, you know, 60s or who, who knows, or 70s, I guess, 70s, um, they just gave him vitamin E and sent him home. There's nothing to be done. You know, and now nobody uses vitamin E, not that there's anything wrong with it. Um, you know, it actually could have some benefits. Uh, but, uh, you know, he just told me, you got to be careful with your penis. Don't let it bend. Don't let a girl injure it. And I always was very careful. But interestingly, I still got injured. And you can still get injured from things even like that you wouldn't suspect would injure you, like oral sex or even missionary position, which is the way I was injured, uh, quote unquote injured, you know. Um, I And this is another thing is um, that I want to talk about is that a lot of guys say they woke up one morning and their penis was bending. And that's, um, you know, I think that happens. That definitely happens. There are people right now on the forums that will tell you it happened. But um, I think there are warning signs beforehand. For me, I had symptoms since I was 18. And then uh, I'll tell you what they were in a moment. But then uh, when I was 24, I did kind of wake up and have like full-blown Peyronie's. So it is kind of a mix. And the early signs are hard to recognize. For me, the, um, God, I got to eat something. For me, the early signs were bending uh, after sex or masturbation. And, um... I think I must have been 18 or so. And after masturbation, my penis would bend a lot um, in the flaccid state, almost 360 degrees. And I would have to lie down and I'd put a, a hot pad on my penis um, that my I think uh, my mom had bought for like uh, muscle aches, you know. But I would just always put that heat pad on my penis. It felt great. Little did I know that, you know, um, heat therapy would become popular and actually effective for treating Peyronie's. So I actually stopped doing that and then I started doing it again later. And uh, I have a rice sock nearby right now. I can't find it right now, but I still use a rice sock heat pad for um, relieving my symptoms and trying to improve my penile health. That's a, another topic as well to talk about. But um, yeah, I uh, so in my opinion, I've mentioned it in my, in another, in my first video, um, I believe there's such a thing as pre Peyronie's. And I know that kind of goes against what I was saying. It's a spectrum, right? But if we're going to put it into different phases, like the calcified phase, advanced, I would say there's pre Peyronie's. And that is when your penis bends in the flaccid state and not the hard or erect state. So um, my penis would bend terribly after sex. 
And um, it was very painful. And I, you know, after a few hours, it would go away. And then when I was erect, I wouldn't notice any bending. But, you know, I kept that up for years, just letting it kind of happen. And I even went to a urologist and he said, you don't have Peyronie's, that's normal. And uh, <laughs> it's definitely not normal because uh, all my friends who don't have Peyronie's, um, they, they tell me they've never experienced that. Um, there might be more to it, you never know. But for me, I always had this kind of inflammation after masturbation or sex. And then... Uh, Later on, maybe when I was 20 or so, I noticed uh, two notches on my penis, very minor. But that was basically the, the result of this constant um, acute syndrome. So maybe you could call it acute Peyronie's or, you know, pre-Peyronie's, either one, acute phase. But then again, it's different because the acute phase of Peyronie's is actually classified as something different by the literature. So that's why I'm going to call this pre Um, You know, I'm going to go ahead and coin that phrase right now, that term. Um, I think pre as I said, is just when your penis bends flaccid after sex, but not erect. And then eventually that will turn into the erect symptoms. So um, do you have Peyronie's, you know, in the, in the pre Peyronie's phase? I would say, yeah. If Peyronie's is just penile damage, you know, the accumulation of penile damage, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, I wish urologists would be aware of this. Ask, ask somebody, you know, is your penis bending after sex? Ask your patient. If it is, then, you know, he has to be more careful with the way he has sex or masturbates. And um, I could go on and on on that, how to masturbate properly. And, uh, that sounds pretty funny, but uh, it's a real fucking deal. Um, I'll make a video on that. But for now, yeah, keep this in mind. There is a pre Peyronie's phase. There was for me, and there still is for me. Meaning that if I masturbate three times in a row right now, or if I masturbate in a bad or wrong way, rushing it, not staying hard, clenching my pelvic floor, then um, I could definitely bend after sex in this acute way. And what I, what I believe is happening is that the penis is taking damage and blood is pooling into these damaged areas because the penis is like a, a mesh, the tissue, right? And so when you damage it, it gets kind of cl clogged up. So those areas of the penis are shut off and blood can't get in there. So it's all dented up. My dick will get completely, you know, looks terrible. It looks, it looks completely destroyed if I do this, um, if, if I mess up after sex. And then I, I have to like start, I have to use uh, my hand to do traction and stretch my penis for an hour just to get it back to normal or put heat on it and do uh, reverse Kegels and all this. So um, it is something that will keep happening to me. It's a, it's a chronic thing that keeps happening. Um, kind of like if you had, you know, uh, elbow problems and every time you lifted weights, your elbows kept hurting and you had to be really careful with it. So it's kind of like that. Um, so if I keep letting it happen, the kind of pre Peyronie's, I, I, maybe I'll think of a better word for this eventually. If I keep letting that kind of penile damage take place, that will manifest itself as a real erect deformity eventually. And that's what happened to me. Though I did have an injury also that kind of made, it, made the deformity come out of nowhere the next day. So you can have both a slow progression or a rapid progression, sometimes the, the areas that are damaged over time can end up the areas that suddenly get really bad after a minor injury. And sometimes it doesn't take a major injury to make it make a dent worse. Um, you know, I think I received oral sex from some girl, from a girl, some girl, um, no, a particular girl. Um, and, uh, I think she was just going a little bit too crazy. And um, I barely noticed just a little bit too much pressure as she as it was kind of hitting uh, the end of her mouth, you know, um, not to get too graphic, but I kind of have to. Um, and uh, it wasn't painful at all. And I'm like, hmm, okay, that's fine. Next day, 
I noticed uh, a major dent uh, forming at the tip of my penis, a new dent. And this was years later. So this is when I was like 26, tw no, 20, 27 or 28. I'm 31 right now. Uh, my major symptoms started at 24, early symptoms started at 18. So you can see it's kind of a, a, a mess. Um, and uh, I could easily say, yeah, my dad has the disease, therefore I'm genetically prone. But you know what else my dad has? Hypoglycemia, or my, my grandpa has hypoglycemia and my dad has um, neuropathy, which is from blood sugar. Even though my dad's a very active person, I had severe neuropathy all through my 20s, which I've cured from ridding myself of insulin resistance. And um, so, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? You know, do, was it the, my genetics that fucked me over? Or was it the fact that I had insulin resistance all through my 20s? And I did. Um, and it really, really has messed me up and I'm still recovering, but uh, I'm much better. And interestingly, as my insulin resistance has gotten better, so has my Peyronie's. But again, that's another topic and it's never that clean cut, you know. You might find another guy who's on a 100% ketogenic diet for like years. And he does, he says, I still have Peyronie's. Or I still see Peyronie's worsening. You know, I, I actually wonder about th that though. I actually wonder if a guy would actually be willing to do that. Um, because I swear to God, uh, not many people can do that. Uh, it's very hard to um, do a ketogenic diet long term. Uh, unless you are really uh, one uh, hardcore son of a bitch, which is what I'm essentially doing. You know, um, the carbs I ate today were extremely low, and uh, I just keep on continuing this. Um, so, uh, where are we then? Um, I, I hope you understand that Peyronie's is not uh, black or white, um, and it's part of a, it's a spectrum. And um, there are ways to kind of prevent it. There are many ways to prevent it. There's the diet way, you know, there's the altering your masturbation and sex practices way. You know, there's, um, there's, uh, there's the physical therapies and uh, dealing with the pre peyronie symptoms. You know, there's a way to deal with that and then prevent it from turning into real Peyronie's. So, um, you know, whether you have it or not, um, you know, this video is already a half hour. I don't want to um, drag this on too much. Um, again, if your penis is bending when it wasn't, right, um, or, the, or a bend is getting worse, maybe your, your, your curve that you were born with is worsening. If your curve that you were born with, your congenital curve is worsening, or if you have any new curves indentations, hourglassing, buckling, any kind of change in your penis, I consider it Peyronie's simply because I know it will become Peyronie's if you, if you let it, right? Um, if you live long enough. Um, and uh, also the whole hard flaccid thing. It's a, it's a weird concept, but um, even hard flaccid or a non-elastic penis. Like your penis should be really elastic, almost like rubber looking when it's flaccid. And mine never was. I used to see pictures or guys in porns and I'd see their penis was like this rubbery, like really kind of elastic looking thing when it was flaccid. And I'm like, man, mine's not like that. Mine's very like kind of hard. And um, now my penis is much more elastic. So um, I know that that was a, a factor. So just if I would have known when I was younger, like, yeah, your penis should be a lot more elastic it must be um, inflamed. There must be inflammation in your penis. If a, if a urologist could have told me that, I could have been saved, you know. So maybe we should, you know, just start calling Peyronie's penile inflammation, penile damage. You know, it's uh, it it's hard to hard to say, um, but but yeah, that that's that's about it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I could talk on this for a really long time, but um, I don't want to. I don't want to just drag on too, too much. I hope you get the main points, and um, that's about it. So treat your penile health. That's the main message. Improve penile health.
and um, I'll help you do that in my in my next videos. I will tell you how to improve your penile health through a bunch of different models, a bunch of different ways. Okay, and um, we're gonna get through this together. We're gonna move forward together. Okay, I believe in you, and um, look forward to talking to you again. Take care.